Hi folks, uh, so it's just a reasonably quick video just to show you how to create um, contact sheets and perhaps just to give you a couple of ideas about how to annotate them as well. Um, creating contact sheets and annotating contact sheets is an excellent way of demonstrating to the examiner that you have engaged in the process, i.e. taking a lot of photographs and that you have made decisions about your own work and that would be either choosing the images that you want to use or perhaps even identifying where some minor editing can actually be done as well. Um, engagement and the ability or willingness to make decisions about your own work is key to the assessment objective. So making contact sheets is crucial as is annotating them. So very simple, um, you take your photographs, you upload your photographs into a folder um, on your computer. Um, where you store them on the computer depends which computer you're using. So for example, in college you can't store computers on your desktop, so you would need to find a different location to store, to store the folder. If you were doing this at home, and I strongly advise that this is a job that could and should be done at home, um, you could so it, save it onto your desktop with all of your images in it. So to make a contact sheet, you start by going to File, uh, once Photoshop is open. Automate, because this is a job that Photoshop is going to do automatically for you, and you choose Contact Sheet. When the following window comes up, um, there is quite a lot of information on here that you can ignore for the time being. So you can see it defaults to a, a sort of A4 size sheet of paper, which is absolutely fine. Um, I would suggest that you go with um, five columns and six rows. I think it probably should default to that the very first time you use it. Um, for the mathematicians amongst you, if you times five by six, uh, you get 30, uh, which means that on each A4 sheet of paper, you are going to be able to see 30 of your images. Uh, you can choose to rotate for best fit. So if you have a range of images that's where some of them are portrait and some of them are landscape, it'll make it neater if you uh, rotate for best fit and that way it'll make sure that all of the images are uh, sort of all lying in a landscape format or all lying in a, for, uh, a portrait format. Just makes the page um, a whole lot um, neater. And I would make sure that use file name as caption is turned on. Uh, that makes it easier for you to identify your images uh, a little bit later. Uh, and also select flatten all layers as well. Um, once you've done this, once you've, you've done this for the first time, providing you use the same computer each time you do it, it will actually remember these settings, so you shouldn't need to change these settings uh, each time you do it, because it should default to what you've saved, saved it to. Um, you can choose individual files, but I'm going to suggest that you choose folder, and then it will say to choose the actual folder that you want. So if I go to choose, and then on desktop, um, I actually already have a folder already created called for contact sheets, and I press open. You'll notice I don't need to select the actual images, I'm just selecting the folder that they're in. So I press open. If that folder had subfolders inside it and you wanted to include those, you could click include subfolders. If you don't want to include them, leave this unticked. Um, and then what you do is once you have identified your contact sheets, you press OK and essentially you sit back and allow Photoshop to create the contact sheet. Um, clearly the more images that are in a folder, the longer this process will take. Um, but it shouldn't take too long and the reason I'm suggesting that this is an ideal thing to do at home is that you could get this running and now go and watch your favourite TV programme or go and have your tea or whatever and uh, come back in half an hour or an hour's time knowing that this is actually created for you. Um, you can see that it's starting to put all of the images on. You can see that they're all being put on in a portrait um, format, even though if you look carefully, so images like this, it's actually been rotated. Um, and they've all got their file name underneath. I've actually, um, on purpose here, I've included a folder of images that actually has more than 30 images in it. And you'll remember that we said five um, columns and six rows, um, well, which is 30 images. 
Um, and you'll notice now that what it's done is having created a first page, it's automatically defaulted to a second page that actually has the remainder of the images on. Uh, so you can see it's actually finished now. You can see I've got two documents open, one that has 30 images on, one that has um, what, six images on. I could now save these. I do need to save each one separately. So I would do file, save as, uh, and save it to where I wanted, contact sheet one, contact sheet two. And then I would use these as evidence uh, when I submit my work of the number of photographs I've taken. Crucially, what you also want to get into the habit of doing is annotating these contact sheets. Now, when we use the word annotating, we don't necessarily mean writing. Annotating is just somehow showing that you have made decisions about your work. So, for example, I could choose the colour red. I could get my paintbrush tool and I could simply... Oops, if I... Help if I had that all the way up to 100%, and I could simply mark photographs that I didn't want with uh, a, a, a red uh, icon, for example, or I could use green for photographs that I do want to make use of. Okay, that's annotation in its simplest form. There are other things that I can do as well, so for example. I may want to highlight, so let's go back to uh, a red colour. I may recognise, uh, let me choose an image. I may see an image, this one for example. Oh, let me zoom in so that we can have a better look. So I may look at this image and I may think, well, I quite like this image, except I'd quite like it to be cropped, for example. So I may choose to symbolize that I'm going to crop it. Um, I may want to darken the corners down. So I may choose to do something like this. Um, there is no need to include an explanation of what your box or your corners mean or what your uh, red and green dots mean um, because this is your language. You can make up your own symbols, for example. But what is very, very, very important is that the examiner is able to see that A, you have taken a lot of photographs with variety where you have tried different angles, different viewpoints, different lighting, etc., etc., but also that you have then made decisions about your work. It is not enough to simply take photographs and then edit some of them. The examiner wants to see that you have made decisions. So that's why annotation is as important as creating the contact sheet in the first place. And that's essentially it. I would now press File, Save As, and then when I come to submit my work or uh, evidence it on my website or in my sketchbook, I would include my contact sheets in there as well. Um, please, 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 um, I cannot stress enough the importance of including contact sheets and annotation with your work. It is absolutely essential. Please do not forget to do it. Okay, thanks folks, and um, enjoy.